Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody. And today we're going to be talking about dates. And when I wrote this article, um, which I'm going to link in the description below, so if you don't want to listen, you can read it, or if you want to go back and get some references and some recipes, I'll link that. And when I did write it, it was Mother's Day, and I was thinking about my mom, who lives 2,637 miles away from me in Leesburg, Virginia. And my mom loves, loves dates. And so this blog or, and this podcast is for her. Uh, it, was, um, it was around April 21st, and it was our, my husband and I's 37th anniversary. I can't believe I've been married that long. It's just it's unbelievable to me. But we went to Palm Springs, California, and discovered um, this place called Shields Date Farm. And it's been around since 1924. And dates were everywhere on this. They were, they were growing them. They had the trees and they had a cafe and they had a gift shop and they had an ice cream parlor. And they were permit, presented in so many different varieties, the dates. I was blown away with all the things that you can use dates for. So I bought a bunch of dates, rolled in coconut and nuts. I bought some date jam. I bought some date coffee and I shipped it to my mom for Mother's Day. And then I bought a bunch of date sugar for myself. And I want to talk to you about date sugar because it's pretty incredible. And I also bought a date shake, which inspired my kefir date shake. And uh, my husband and I shared it and walked around the gardens. And I really wish my mom was there to share the experience. So, but I want to share it with you because I've learned so much about dates and why date sugar is one of my favorite sweeteners to use for baked goods. And I'm, it, there's a lot of reasons for that. But dates are really nature's healthy treats, and they have a really good nutritional profile. So, for instance, dates contain, uh, for a 3.5-ounce serving or 100 grams, they have the following nutrients. So there's 277 calories, 75 carbs, and 7 grams of fiber, which is a lot. That's a lot of fiber. Um, there's 2 grams of protein. And 20% of the recommended daily allowance for potassium, uh, 14% of the recommended daily allowance for magnesium. And magnesium is so important. Any food that has magnesium, I eat because that's something that um, I really need a lot of. We all do. Most people, 85% of people are deficient in magnesium because our soils are depleted of it. We just don't get enough. And then if we process foods or unhealthy foods, it strips magnesium from the body. So it's really important. And this dates have a lot of magnesium. They also have copper, which is 18%, and manganese at 15% of the recommended daily allowance. They also have a little bit of iron. They have 5% iron, and they also have something that is really important, and that is B6. And they have 12% of recommend daily allowance for that. And anytime you can get B vitamins, that's a good thing. So Fiber is one of the, my favorite things about dates, and especially because I like date sugar. Getting up fiber is important because it feeds your microbiome, which in turn creates greater wellness for you. And if you feed those microbes, they take care of you. And here's the deal. They have seven grams of fiber for a 3.5 ounce serving, but they have two grams of fiber in one teaspoon of date sugar, which is more than any other sugar. And including dates in your diet is a great way to increase your fiber. Now, remember, fiber um, is what your microbes eat. So they want more fiber so they can grow and multiply. And fiber can help um, the colon by promoting regular bowel movements. And since fiber contributes to the formation of a stool, um, it is really important to have a lot of fiber in your diet. In one study, 21 people who consume seven dates per day for 21 days experienced improvements in stool frequency and had a significant increase in bowel movements compared to when they didn't eat dates. And if you've ever had a date, they're delicious. It's not hard to eat a few dates a day. But dates only not only help with bowel movements and things like that, they help with blood sugar, which is surprising because they do have sugar, a higher sugar content in them, but... They have the potential to help with blood sugar regulations because they're very low on the glycemic index, and that's because of the fiber. But they also have a lot of antioxidants. 
So plants and their components play a significant role in the management of diabetes. And they show significant effects to manage the function of the pancreatic tissues via an increase in insulin production, and they inhibit the intestinal absorption of glucose. So the exact mode of action of dates is in the control of diabetes is not really understood, but they really think that it's due to the increases in the output of insulin and the inhibiting of the absorption of the glucose. So they think that that's what's going on, which probably has a lot to do with the fiber. So eating dates may benefit diabetics and also management as the fiber in the dates can be beneficial for your blood sugar control. Fibers slow your digestion and may prevent those blood sugars from spiking too high after eating. And have a good research article on that. So if you want to check that out, go to the article description in the link below. Now, this is really interesting, but dates can help your brain. So eating dates will help your brain and, and lower inflammation markers like interleukin-6 in the brain. And high levels of um, IL-6 are associated with a higher risk of neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's. So additionally, they've done a lot of animal studies and have shown dates to be very helpful, helpful in reducing the activity of these beta proteins, which can put plaques into the brain. And it's important because plaque accumulation in the brain may disturb communication between your brain cells. And that can ultimately lead to brain cell death and Alzheimer's disease. So um, they found one animal study found that mice fed foods mixed with dates had significantly better memory and learning ability, as well as less anxiety related behaviors compared to those who did not eat them. So we need more human studies to confirm the role of dates in brain health. But it's a it's an important thing to know that eating whole foods, um, you know, fruits and vegetables, foods that are that come from the earth are so important, especially for your brain health. Now I want to talk to you about date sugar. Okay, I love date sugar. I use I use coconut sugar too, and I love that too. But I like date sugar better um, because most people don't use it; they don't know about it. But here's some reasons that I really like it. So. Date sugar tastes more like brown sugar, and it has this caramel taste. And um, it is different product than date palm sugar. Now, that is made from the sap of the date palm tree, while date sugar is made from the tree's fruit ground up into tiny, small particles, which is why you get more fiber. So date sugar is as sweet as brown sugar, and you can use it one-to-one -one in recipes, which I have done many times. And in every single teaspoon that you use, you get two grams of fiber. And that's very unusual in any kind of sugar. And it's also one of the lowest um, on the glycemic index, coming in at 50, where regular sugar is at 67. And because date sugar is simply ground up whole dried fruit, it gives you all of the fruits and nutrients, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and fiber. Whereas, you know, refined sugars or even sugars that have been processed like raw sugars and things like that, they, they're not the ground up um, fruit themselves. They're more a highly processed food. And date sugar has about 10 calories per teaspoon, which is about one third lower calories than regular sugar. Um, and it also has a surprising amount of potassium. And that's really important. Um, everybody needs more potassium. It has about 1% per teaspoon. And I just love this in baked goods. Now, one thing you need to know about date sugar, it doesn't melt like regular sugar. You can't, it stays creamy, but it's because it's the fruit, it doesn't really dissolve and like regular sugar does. So if you need that, you can use coconut sugar or raw sugar, those dissolve. Now, one of the things I love about dates is for non-dairy kefir. One of my readers, her name was Fran, posted a comment explaining how she kept her grains alive while making non-dairy sesame seed milk for over a year by feeding them sugar made from date paste. Because non-dairy kefirs, um, they're made with non-dairy milks and they don't have very many carbohydrates in them because they're mostly out, made out of water and most of the nuts don't have a lot of carbohydrates. So the grains don't have anything to eat. So they tend to die if you don't give them some kind of sugar to consume. So this lady used date paste. Here's what she said. I'm a vegan and I used to make my own kefir with non-dairy homemade sesame seed, milk, sesame seed milk that I added homemade day puree, which I thinned down in order to feed the milk kefir grains. 
I started out by dunking my grains into cow's milk once a fortnight to keep it alive, but then once a day, once then, but then one day I had enough grains and I decided I was going to test to see how long the grains would live if I used them only in sesame seed milk and didn't go back and forth. A year and a half later, they were still happily culturing my milk, and I'm guessing that my grains converted to the date sugar quite happily as they showed no signs of either dying or slowing down. So if you make non-dairy kefir, I have 16 recipes for you, and I'll put that in the link description below. Um, but date paste, you're going to need something to feed them. That's the difference between milk kefir, regular cow's milk kefir, and um, non-dairy, is that you've got to give them some kind of food to eat and consume, because that's what they make the probiotics out of. So non-dairy kefir is low in carbohydrates, so they'll need that extra food. So you, I have a whole article on, on date paste and how to make it. Okay, now, another cool thing that you can do is to second ferment your kefir with dates and vanilla. So after you make your kefir, your regular kefir, you second ferment it again and it gets even more probiotics, vitamins, and minerals. Add a date and a splash of vanilla to your kefir and let it ferment for about an hour on the counter. Then place it in the fridge with the date still in a jar. And you can even make your own homemade vanilla. Um, I have a vanilla recipe, a vanilla extract recipe that's delicious, super easy to make. Um, but only use one date per quart or even better, two quarts of kefir. Stick it in the fridge and uh, it'll second ferment and give you more nutrients, more vitamins, more minerals because you're giving the microbes more things to eat. So dates have lots of sugar and they will feed your kefir like crazy. Um, you'll love the flavor of dates and vanilla and you can keep this in your fridge for a long time. Um, and you can keep adding to your, if you put the second ferment it and put it in the fridge, you can keep adding to it because it has that date in there and it'll keep fermenting your milk and making it taste creamy and less sour. And um, it just keeps fermenting slowly in the fridge. It's wonderful. So I have three recipes for you. I have a vanilla extract recipe, a second ferment your kefir recipe, and a recipe on how to make date paste. So that is in the article, which I'm going to link below. I also have cinnamon date kombucha, which is heavenly. Um, cinnamon has a long history of health benefits. It's good for blood sugar. It's good for so many different things. And I kind of explained that in the article. But cinnamon date kombucha is super bubbly. It loves the dates. It gets super bubbly. It's super easy to make. And I'll link that below. I have a cultured apple nut and cheese dip, which is to die for. It is one of my favorite cheese recipes. It's like, so you make kefir cheese and you add dates and you add walnuts and you add apples and oh my, it is absolutely heavenly. And I'm going to link that in the description below too. I have cultured carrot cake in a jar. I've done a whole blog and article on that. And that's made with carrots and apples and dates and nuts. And it's delicious. I have a date and clementine sourdough bread and you can use oranges if you don't have clementines. But it's fantastic. It has dates and that orangey flavor and the sourdough bread, and it makes your bread rise higher because it loves the, it loves the sugar and the dates. Um, I also have the link for the date paste, so you can do your non-dairy kefir. I have a date pie, which is my mom's favorite. Um, she loves date pie. That was her favorite thing that her mom used to make her every time she saw her. And I had never had date pie until I heard my mom talk about it. And it's kind of similar to like. I would say pecan pie, but it's a little bit more creamy and it's really, really good. And I have that with an einkorn crust. And if you haven't tried einkorn flour, you got to try it, guys. It's so good for you. It's so much better than wheat flour because it's the most ancient wheat there is. Um, einkorn is where all the other wheat came from. And they got hybridized from um, einkorn wheat because einkorn wheat had a, a lower yield and when they would harvest it. So they tried to fix that by mixing it with goat grasses, which is where a lot of allergies came into being because um, einkorn doesn't have the genome that causes food allergies. And so if you struggle with that, I highly recommend uh, you looking into einkorn flour. It's so good for you. I have noticed a big difference since we started using it. It's great for many things, but especially for people who are allergic to wheat, you might want to check it out. Plus it makes absolutely delicious pie crust. And it's the most ancient wheat there is and it hasn't been hybridized or overly changed. It's just the way that it's been for since it began. So it's a great, it's, it's something that I love. So I try to include some recipes with it because it's made such a difference in my life. I also have a date and flax sourdough bread that 
Oh my gosh, it's so good, guys. I was looking at this picture. I need to make this again. I it was it's sourdough day for me, and I made two huge loaves of bread. And I'm like, oh, I should have made that Dayton flax bread because I love that bread. And it's so good on sandwiches. It's, it's a it's really good. I also have a gingerbread keeper smoothie that has a little bit of blackstrap molasses with minerals and some dates in it. I have a kefir date shake, which is super creamy and super, oh my gosh, you just need dates. And I think it's frozen bananas and kefir and it's sweet and creamy and tastes like a milkshake. I have kefir donut holes that are so much fun to make and they use dates in as, as a base. And on my kids, I can't make them very much because they, they eat them so fast, I never get any. Um, I also have an orange Julius kefir soda, that's yummy. And that uses a date. It gives it that creamy caramel flavor. I have a pecan pie kefir smoothie that has dates in it. That's got oatmeal, dates, pecans, and those are all prebiotics for your microbiome that will help them grow and multiply. And I also have SCOBY date balls. And these are refined sugar-free and blessed with probiotics from your SCOBY puree, which I teach you how to make. And I know that sounds crazy, but don't knock it till you try it because it's actually very, very good for you, especially for your gut and for your joints. And it actually makes a really good date ball, which my family loves. So those are some of the recipes I have. This is more about dates. I'm just trying to give you ideas of foods to eat that will help you and encourage you because here's the deal. We all need stuff to make, you know, when you have special occasions, you want treats for your family. And I love dates. They are a great thing to make um, wonderful treats and pies and balls and shakes and all different kinds of things that people need because we do have things that we want to celebrate. And uh, dates are a great way uh, to use the either the sugar or the dates themselves to make some really good healthy treats for your family. And boy, boy are they delicious. So those are seven healthy reasons I love dates. And I'm sure you probably will find them more. Um, and I, I also do this podcast because I want people to buy more date sugar so it becomes more readily available. Um, you can get it on Amazon. I have a link for that. Um, or you can even go to the Shields Date Farm and get it. They're, they're one of the biggest distributors of date sugar. I bought a big bucket of it. But I think it's really good for you. I think it will really help you too if you want something that will make a healthy treat for you. Anyway, so have a great week, guys. Thanks for listening. Check out those recipes. There's a lot of them. And uh, I hope you have a good week. And thanks for listening. And we will talk to you next week.